is. <laughs> it's Just rolling. Talk past it. Talk past it. Don't even. Yeah, that's right, lady. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Bring to the Actually, what's more disconcerting? Okay, I just first of all start by apologising for my dress because we went for a walk at the Blue Springs before this, so I wasn't expecting to be up front and centre. Uh, <laughs> my name is Rachel Jones and I am the candidate for Tauranga. Um, I am, or I could be, the poster child for education in New Zealand under the old education system. So I'm the, I'm the person who sailed through primary school, did really well at secondary school, there was never any question that I would go on to university, even though both my parents had left school at 16. Uh, I got scholarships, I did degrees, multiple degrees, I had two PhDs. I went on to have a career in uh, education, and I was a small business owner for a few years, and now we're into international research. So I would like to be able to claim that that's all down to my intellectual prowess and wonderful skills. But what that story doesn't tell you is that I was lucky enough to be raised in New Zealand when you could earn a living with one income and a father and a mother can raise a family. And so my mum was able to stay at home. She was able to read to me. I could read before I went to school. It doesn't tell you that I went to school, well, I never went to school hungry. I never went to school without shoes. Um, so I was very fortunate. It doesn't tell you that I was a Pākehā in a Pākehā dominated system. I never saw a Māori teacher until I was at high school. So I would, while I'd like to be able to claim that it's my intellectual ability that got me to where I am now, actually it's the system and it's the structures in place and because we had uh, lots of opportunity back in the 70s and 80s that we don't have now. And that's basically why I'm standing for Labour and why I'm standing as a candidate because I see those opportunities slipping away from our kids now and we have inequality built into the very structures of our society. And I think uh, with my experience um, through education and my job experience that I can bring skills to Parliament to make really significant changes in those systems. So I'm standing in Tauranga. I've been active in the party for the last couple of years. Cliff Allen is the man responsible for bringing me in. Uh, thank you, Cliff. And <laughs> I got off the couch, I thought I'd just be a foot soldier, I thought I'd just be the person delivering pamphlets, but very quickly got sucked into more jobs and ended up helping with the uh, regional conference first, uh, and then gradually escalating my commitment until I decided to stand. I've also been organising the Bay and Lakes Hub, I'm on Women's Council as one of the representatives at large, uh, and I'm also helping out with the volunteering committee on the main campaign team. Got my tentacles well and truly into the Labour Party, or rather, the Labour Party's got its tentacles really well and truly into me. So, the things that I'll be looking to, I don't know how I'm doing for time, but the things I'm looking to change when I get in there really are around educational opportunity. Uh, and for me, it's also work conditions, it's the living wage, the push for a living wage, it's repealing what the lovely Simon Bridges who has done since he's been a minister. So, I'm really looking forward to taking it to him over there. He's a very short man. I don't think he's going to want to stand next to me. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to, uh, to, I was going to say, going face to face, but it won't be face to face because he's only about here. And really just um, making change. You know, I, I, I want to go back to something more of the values that we had in New Zealand when I grew up rather than the New Zealand we've got now, where it's about individualism and not the greater good. So that's my bit. Any questions? <laughs> well, we have one minute of questions now. Um, yeah, do you have a question over there, Cliff? Oh, no. Uh, well, I'll, 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 throw my, I'll throw my bit in. One of the problems that I had with the old education system, you think was so wonderful, <laughs> is that it, it did um, very, very seriously. Um, limit the number of people that can actually get to university and I always believe one of the reasons why it did that is because we have an absolute rubbish early childhood system, okay. uh, early childhood uh, education and I mean if, if I had my way every kid would be going to early childhood education at two and a half and then we wouldn't have room in our universities for all the people that wanted to go there. So what's your position on the early childhood stuff? Um, yeah, I, I think it's crucially important. Actually, interestingly, I didn't get any early childhood education because I grew up with a mum who was at home, so my education came from mum and dad. But I think we definitely need to get in there early. 
All of the countries that do really well on uh, educational achievement, especially the Scandinavian countries like Finland, uh, European countries like the Netherlands, they have a lot of nurturing right from the start, a lot of educational hours, and I think that's really crucial to looking at achievement. And I totally agree that we should have people uh, able to go to university. In fact, when I was at university, it was open to everyone. I think now it's a lot more closed because of the financial constraints. A lot of people can't afford to go back to university and retrain. Whereas before, when you used, everyone was able to get an allowance, people could go in. I have a question because I have done a bit of um, mm. post-grade student yeah. advocacy for the Masters and PhD students at Waikum University. Really, there's a need for a national, when I say national, not the word, but a, a statewide university because this fractionalisation into the regions, these councils aren't working with their um, local councils, these universities. They're not putting out any, there's no young, bright students sitting there listening to council meetings and reporting back to the community. And, and that, to me, is the biggest loss at the regional level. So there's something that they could do. But we also need to have one university where everyone looks to that can give it back impartial data to the country, and we don't have that as well. So to me, I think, I think we need to look at that. That's an interesting take. It's not something that I yeah. had considered. I certainly know that we need uh, better education in the regions, and in Tauranga, to start looking at putting in a new campus for uh, a combined campus with the Wangana and uh, Waikato and the, and the Polytech. So we're trying to get more youth to stay in the regions and be able to complete their education. That's just six minutes. Five for talk and answer questions. Thank you. <laughs>